okay, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but there's maybe a slight chance that Voyager 1 came to an end, at least unofficially. And today we're going to discuss why and what's going on, what most likely happened, and also talk about some of the biggest achievements of the mission in the last few decades. Decades. That's right. This is a really old mission. The longest living NASA mission ever. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss what's going on here, what must have happened, and why the probe is no longer working. But actually, let's start with this. A NASA-based countdown for how long the mission has been going on. 46 years, 5 months, 22 days as of right now. And technically it's still going. And I guess even more technically, Voyager 2 is just a little bit older. We'll briefly talk about this mission as well, but the reason Voyager 1 was always a little bit more important is because it's traveling just a little bit faster. And as a result, it was able to go through some of the outer layers of the solar system much quicker, sending a lot of really intriguing data for many, many years helping us discover so much more about the solar system we never knew. But before we discuss some of its achievements and some of its glory, let's briefly discuss the issues first. Actually, one of the first issues was during the launch. Even though Voyager 2 was totally fine, when Voyager 1 launched on September 5th of 1977, the launch itself almost failed. One of the rocket stages stopped burning, and so it took a lot of last-second changes to essentially prevent the rocket from failing and help it reach the orbit. But the engineers got lucky, and everything after that was fine. With the probe then traveling for many, many years. Here's roughly what its pathway looks like if you were to look at it from planet Earth every single day since the 80s. But some of its other problems actually started after it exited the solar system and started to be exposed to a lot more cosmic rays. It officially entered interstellar space in 2012. And we knew this because it suddenly started to receive a lot less solar particles in between August and September of 2012. But at the same time, it also started to receive a lot more radiation from outside of the solar system. It was completely unprotected to cosmic rays. And quite a lot of these cosmic rays can obviously damage a lot of components. And this might have happened in 2017 when for some reason several thrusters on Voyager 1 suddenly failed. Now, it wasn't actually using thrusters anyway, but they suddenly stopped responding, and so NASA decided to do something a little bit tricky. They actually decided to test the secondary thrusters after roughly around 40 years. And they seem to have worked. This was the first time ever thrusters were fired on this probe in interstellar space after 40 years of travel. But the next problem started around 2019. At this point, this was actually not a problem with radiation or anything, it was the problem of power. You can actually see right here somewhere, if you look at the probe from this perspective, you'll see that it has an RTG, radioisotope thermoelectric generator, which contains a bunch of plutonium balls inside, which then produce energy. Now, initially, in the 70s, it was able to produce approximately 450 watt of energy, with most of it escaping as heat. But every single year, it would lose approximately 4 watt of power because this type of plutonium has a half-life of just under 90 years. And naturally, after 46 years, the power dropped dramatically. And so in 2019, NASA engineers had to make some sacrifice. And so on both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, they decided to disable heaters. With every single instrument dropping by 50 degrees in Celsius in temperature, but surprisingly, not failing and functioning just fine. And so for the next couple of years, all of the instruments here were working in super cold conditions. Then in 2022, another issue appeared on Voyager 1. It started having troubles with telemetry. As a matter of fact, the attitude articulation and control system was sending unusual jumbled data, which Voyager 2 was not doing at all. And so that's when the issues officially started. And even though NASA was able to reset this and basically stop the errors from appearing, this was really more of a patch than an actual fix. But then, in early 2023, another decision had to be made in order to keep instruments going. Either NASA would have to turn off one of the instruments or change something inside. And they actually decided to try something a little bit different. They disabled a voltage regulator instead of sacrificing one of the science instruments. And though the system is technically supposed to prevent voltage spikes, because the overall power was pretty low, the engineers believed that this was not a problem and would actually save power long term. 
And so at first, they decided to do this on Voyager 2, which didn't actually experience any bugs or problems, and so all of its instruments were functioning normally. But then, sometimes in the fall of 2023, they did the same for Voyager 1. But in November of 2023, just a few months later, that's when suddenly, for some unknown reasons, Voyager 1 started sending back a bunch of zeros instead of data. And in this case, it took a few weeks to figure out what's happening. Apparently, the issues are right here. This is known as FDS, or Flight Data Subsystem, and for the lack of better words, it's the Voyager's computer. Its main purpose is to collect data from science instruments, as well as engineering data from a lot of other devices, and then combine it all into one single message and send it back to Earth. So basically, it's a super important part for communication with NASA. But all of the messages coming back are just zeros. And even though NASA tried to restart this, or to reset it to its original state, nothing worked. Voyager is still not returning any useful data, even after approximately 4 months. And without actually physically accessing this, nobody knows what to even fix. With the much bigger problem being that everyone who designed this and who created the probe is unfortunately no longer alive. Moreover, all of the schematics used for this probe are not even digitized. I actually spent a few hours trying to find anything on these computers, and I only found one single file you can find in the description that briefly talks about all of these computers from the 80s. No schematics, no actual designs, nothing. Instead, it's like 400 pages of different information, very basic information, about these old computers. And because many of these documents are basically like 50 years old, written by engineers who never actually thought this mission is going to go on that long, at this point, trying to find the documents, trying to understand the documents, and trying to find potential solutions is literally spacecraft archaeology. I guess an entirely new field of science. Not to mention that every single time there is any solution, it takes approximately 45 hours to hear back from the probe. That's how far away this probe is. For a signal to travel to the probe and return back to Earth, it takes 45 hours. And so since no one alive knows what's inside, and finding documents have been kind of difficult, at this point fixing this is going to be a huge challenge. Which also means that, maybe, just maybe, this is the end of the mission after all. It will probably take a few more months before NASA officially announces it, but despite the instruments still working, since the data received is completely useless, there is most likely going to be no point keeping this mission alive. And though technically it was supposed to last until at least 2025, it might finish just a little bit early. But we obviously still have its sister, Voyager 2, that was able to visit all of the planets and seems to actually still work just fine. All of the instruments are still functioning, it doesn't seem to have any glitches, and it might even have enough energy to work for at least a few more years. And so this probe might actually function until at least 2030s. Now after 2030, it might no longer have enough power, and actually after 2036, it's going to be so far that even Deep Space Network will no longer be able to reach it, but before that, going all the way into late 2020s, we might still get some data. But I guess just the fact that we're still getting any data from it is already pretty impressive. As a matter of fact, one of the recent discoveries of the super powerful gamma ray bursts we've discussed in one of the videos in the description had quite a lot of data coming from Voyager 2 and Voyager 1, allowing the researchers to pinpoint the exact location of the gamma ray burst. But I guess until NASA officially announces the end for Voyager 1, we can maybe still have some hope that they might find a way to fix it. The probe that blew everyone's mind in the 70s when it was able to reveal that Jupiter seems to have volcanic moons. While also capturing these incredible images of Jupiter, then also taking incredible shots of Saturn, discovering that there are some differences between the two gas giants, including the fact that for some reason, Saturn doesn't seem to have as much helium in its upper atmosphere as Jupiter, but more importantly, taking incredible images of its primary target, Titan, which allowed us to uncover a very complex object with a lot of organic compounds, very thick atmosphere, and maybe life. That's of course something we haven't found yet, but that's of course one of the reasons why Titan became one of the most exciting objects in the solar system. It also became famous for the iconic shot of pale blue dot, with the Earth visible as a tiny, tiny pixel from approximately 40 astronomical units away. And at that point, I think most people assumed that this was the end of the mission. But it wasn't. It just kept going and going and going. First it went through termination shock, then helio sheath, and then it finally entered interstellar space. 
And it was actually during this time when a lot of NASA researchers became super excited because this is the data we've never had from anywhere, allowing the researchers to finally get data from the regions of space we've never explored. And so both Voyager probes definitely had exceptionally productive 46 years, helping us uncover the solar system in a way we never could. But assuming that this is the end of the mission, so what's next for the probe? Is it going to collide with something? Is it going to disappear somewhere? Well, it's just going to keep traveling across the galaxy. It's never really going to approach any star very close, and it's just going to keep going and going and going. We only know of its path for the next million years or so, but it's going to come close to Gliese 445 in the next 40,000 years, and then it's going to approach another star at approximately one light year in the next 300,000 years. But then for the next few millions of years, it's going to reach nothing. Very likely just traveling across in complete silence until the end of days. Mostly because the chance for its collision with anything is extremely low. Now obviously if humanity becomes advanced enough and we might find a way to travel really fast across the entire galaxy, someone might go out there and try to find it, somehow recovering it in the process. But if that doesn't happen, it's just going to keep traveling and traveling in the middle of the galaxy. Something that a lot of other probes, like the Pioneer probes, have already been doing for some time. Either way though, because this is basically the longest running NASA mission ever, just knowing that these probes still function is already super impressive. And that means that we'll definitely come back and talk more about them in some of the future videos, either if NASA fixes Voyager 1 or if Voyager 2 makes an incredible discovery. And until those videos, check out some of the other Voyager videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.